Good evening, brothers and sisters, prayer warriors. This is Brother Felix here, and tonight we're going to continue reading from the book of Acts, chapter 15, verses 1 through 21. We're going to continue to read from the book of Acts, chapter 15, verses 1 through 21. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I just give you thanks for today. I give you thanks for my life, for my wife, Teresa, for my beautiful children, Emmanuel, Ariana, Carlos Felix, and Luis Enrique. I give you thanks for loving and forgiving us, Lord. I give you thanks for all your prayer warriors and all my brothers and sisters that watch this video. Lord, I ask what I always ask. In the name of Jesus, may there be at least one verse for each one of our ears. That would be two verses per head. And when we hear these verses spoken, may the Holy Spirit be stirred up inside of us and may we have the courage to apply these verses to our life. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, Acts chapter 15, verses 1 through 21. The Council at Jerusalem. Some men came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the brothers, unless you are circumcised, according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. So Paul and Barnabas were appointed, along with some other believers, to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and elders about this question. The church sent them on their way, and they traveled through Phoenicia and Samaria. They told how the Gentiles had been converted. This news made all the brothers very glad. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and elders, to whom they reported everything God had done through them. Then some believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, The Gentiles must be circumcised and required to obey the laws of Moses. The apostles and elders met to consider this question. After much discussion, Peter got up and addressed them, Brothers, you know that some time ago God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from the lips the message of of the gospel and believe. God, who knows the heart, showed that he accepted them by giving them the Holy Spirit to them, just as he did to us. He made no distinction between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. Now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of the disciples' yoke that neither we nor our fathers have been able to bear? No, we believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus that we are saved just as they are. The whole assembly became silent as they listened to Barnabas and Paul telling about the miraculous signs and wonders God had done among the Gentiles through them. When they finished, James spoke up, Brothers, listen to me. Simon has described to us how God at first showed his concern by taking from the Gentiles a people for himself. The words of the prophets are in agreement with this, as it is written, after this I will return and rebuild David's fallen tent. Its ruins I will rebuild, and I will restore it, that the remnant of men may seek the Lord, and all the Gentiles who bear my name, says the Lord, who does these things that have been known for ages. 
It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Instead, we should write to them, telling them to abstain from food polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from the meat of strangled animals, and from blood. For Moses had been preached in every city from the earliest times and is read in the synagogues on every Sabbath. These are the words of our Lord our God, brothers and sisters. Let's break it down a little bit. Verse 1 reads, Some men came down to Judea from Antioch and were teaching the brothers, Unless you are circumcised, according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. The real problem for the Jewish Christians was not whether Gentiles could be saved, but whether Gentiles had to adhere to the laws of Moses. The test of the following these laws was circumcision. The Jewish Christians were worried because soon there would be more Gentile than Jewish Christians. And they were afraid of weaken, weakening moral standards among believers if they did not follow Jewish laws. Paul, Barnabas, and other church leaders believed that the Old Testament law was very important, but it was not a prerequisite to salvation. The law cannot save. Only by grace through faith in Jesus Christ can a person be saved. The delegates to the council at Jerusalem came from the churches in Jerusalem and Antioch. The conversion of Gentiles was raising an urgent question for the early church. Do the Gentiles have to adhere to the laws of Moses and other Jewish traditions to be saved? One group of Jewish Christians insisted that the following the law, including submitting to the rite of circumcision, was necessary for salvation. The Gentiles, however, did not think they needed to become Jewish first in order to become Christians. So Paul and Barnabas discussed this problem with the leaders of the church. The council upheld the convictions expressed by Paul and Barnabas that following the Jewish laws, including being circumcised, was not essential for salvation. Verse 2. This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. So Paul and Barnabas were appointed along with some other believers to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and elders about this question. The question of whether the Gentile believers should obey the laws of Moses to be saved was an important one. The controversy intensified largely due to the success of the new Gentile churches. The conservatives in the Jerusalem church were led by converted Pharisees, chapter 15, verse 5, who preferred a legalistic religion to one based on faith alone. If the conservatives had won, the Gentiles would have been required to be circumcised and converted to Judaism. This would have seriously confined Christianity to simply being another sect within Judaism. There is something of a Pharisee in each one of us. We may unwittingly mistake upholding tradition, structure, and legal requirements for obeying God. Make sure the gospel brings freedom and life to those you are trying to reach. It is helpful to see how the churches in Antioch and Jerusalem resolve their conflict. Number one. The church in Antioch sent a delegation to help find a solution. Number two, the delegates met with the church leaders to give their reports and set another date to continue their discussion. Number three, Paul and Barnabas gave their report. Number four, James summarized the reports and drew up the decision. And number five, everyone agreed to abide by the decision. Number six, the council seat, the council sent a letter with delegates back to Antioch to report the decision. This is a wise way to handle conflicts within the church. 
Problems must be confronted and all sides of the argument must be given a fair hearing. The discussion should be held in the presence of leaders who are spiritually mature and trustworthy to make wise decisions. Everyone should then abide by these decisions. Verse 10 reads, Now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of the disciples a yoke that neither we nor our fathers have been able to bear? If the law was a yoke that the Jews could not bear, how did having the law help them throughout their history? Paul wrote that the law was a guide that pointed out their sins so they could repent and return to God and right living. See Galatians chapter 3 verses 24 and 25. It was and still is impossible to obey the law completely. Verse 13. When they finished, James spoke up. Brothers, listen to me. This James is Jesus' brother. He became the leader of the church in Jerusalem and wrote the book of James. Verse 14. Simon has described to us how God at first showed his concern by taking from the Gentiles a people for himself. Simon is another name for Peter. And verses 20 and 21 read. Instead, we should write to them, telling them to abstain from food polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from the meat of strangled animals, and from blood. For Moses had been preached in every city from the earliest of times and is read in the synagogues on every Sabbath. James's judgment was that Gentile believers did not have to be circumcised, but they should stay away from food polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, a common part of idol worship, and from eating meat of strangled animals from consuming blood, reflecting on the biblical teaching that the life is the blood in Leviticus chapter 17 verse 14. If Gentile Christians would abstain from these practices, they would please God and get along better with their Jewish brothers and sisters in Christ. Of course, there were other actions inappropriate for believers, but the Jews were especially concerned about these four. The compromise helped the church to grow unhindered by the cultural differences of Jews and Gentiles. When we share a message across the culture and economic boundaries, we must be sure that the requirements for faith we set up are God's, not people's. Amen, brothers and sisters. Let's see uh, some verses that stick out to me. Verses 16, 17, and 18. After this, I will return and rebuild David's fallen tent. Its ruins I will rebuild, and I will restore it, that the remnant of men may seek the Lord, and all the Gentiles who bear my name, says the Lord, who does these things that have been known for ages. Good reading tonight, my brothers and sisters. Hopefully you guys picked up on some verses. And let's end in prayer. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I just want to thank you for today. I want to thank you for my life for my wife, for my children. I want to thank you for loving and forgiving us, Lord. 
I ask in your name that you heal and forgive all of us of any sicknesses and forgive us of any sins. I ask that you give us all a discerning heart, that you fill us all with your Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit removes any evil inside of us and destroys the evil. I ask that you keep us healthy, happy, and safe, that you continue to lead us, teach us, guide us, and protect us. I ask in the name of Jesus that you heal us of any sicknesses, diseases, viruses, coughs, diabetes, arthritis, degenerative back disc disease, sore knees, any tumors, any growths. I ask that you heal us of those things. That you heal us of anything that's hurting us physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. I ask that you break chains of addiction. Whether they are in us or are in one of our loved ones. I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to break chains of addictions to alcohol, to smoking, to drugging. To lusting, to greed. To money, to power. I ask in the name of Jesus that you break any chains to any sin that we enjoy doing. I ask that if we choose to do that sin, that the Holy Spirit convicts us in our heart until we repent and turn away from it. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect all your prayer warriors, Lord. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect my mother and remove that blood clot in her leg. I ask you to continue to bless, heal, and protect my, my wife, Teresa. That you take away any pain she's feeling. I ask for you to bless, heal, and protect my sister, Elizabeth, that you help her recover from her surgery. I ask you to bless, heal, and protect my sister, Yvette, and help her get healed from her sciatic nerve problem in her back. I ask you to bless you and protect everyone in the Kingdom Music family ministry, especially Brother Brian and his wife and children. I ask you to bless you and protect everyone at St. Paul's and Hope Lutheran Churches in Aurora, especially Pastor Angel Morales and his wife and children. And I ask you to bless you and protect everyone at the House of Rest Church in Modesto, California, especially Pastors David and Angel Rocha, and their wives and children. I just thank you, Lord, and I ask that you keep your hands in all of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, my brothers and sisters, you guys have a great night, and we will continue reading tomorrow. Good night, guys.